This episode of Torpreneur is sponsored by Fair Harbor. Fair Harbor fuels the experiences of the travel industry with the most comprehensive online reservation system available for tours, activities, and attractions. Visit fairharbor.com to see why over 15,000 businesses worldwide trust Fair Harbor to better serve their customers and increase online bookings. Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow Torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. And welcome to episode 150. That's a special number here at Tourpreneur. Who would have thought we've got to... 150 episodes. Delighted to be joined on the show by our blogging marketing expert, Doreen Wharton. How are you, Doreen? I'm doing well. Glad to be back again. Round three. Round three. What I can say is I'm getting tons of positive feedback about this series, Blogging for Tour Operators. A lot of our listeners are really intrigued by this topic, getting questions coming in. And of course, this is something that we we can do for free. Yes, it takes time and effort and practice, but this is something that operators can master on their own if they put the hours in. Um, last time out, we talked about what should tour operators blog about on our essential blogging guide for tour businesses. Today, we are talking all about... Repurposing content. Yeah, so this is a really important topic. Why is it so important for us to repurpose our content, Doreen. What's the benefit of that for tour operators? Well, for for anyone who doesn't know what that means, because it seems like it's a new word since content marketing came out, but it's really just taking a piece of content, whether it's a blog or any, or video, or of course a podcast, and you just find ways to use it again and again. The reason why we would do it is because it's going to save you a ton of time and energy. Not everything has to be brand new. And we all consume information in different ways. So someone may not, you know, read blogs, but they listen to podcasts or whatever the case may be. And if you can move it into different mediums, you're going to reach more people. Absolutely. And I think a good example of that is even at bloggingfortouroperators.com is there are these heathens out there that don't listen to podcasts, believe it or not. I can't believe it. But they love reading blogs. And I commissioned a writer to look at some of our episodes, our earlier ones, and actually write those up as articles. So somebody with a a good ear that's able to listen and say, okay, well, here are the major learning points of this article. Here are some great quotes from Doreen. Here are some great tools, et cetera. So from my perspective, that means I know there are a lot of people in our community that don't listen to podcasts or even right now just don't have the time or bandwidth because a time of recording, most people aren't traveling yet or commuting, but they have that time to read a blog post on their phone or their tablet or whatever it may be. So, and I've seen quite a spike in traffic by doing that. That's great. And also remember the fact that a small percentage of people even see it. They might actually listen to podcasts, but they just didn't catch that one. Yeah. Or they might read blogs and they just didn't see that one because it didn't come up on social media or the usual way that they find it. So repurposing, it's a good thing to do. Well, I guess also it leads to, depending on the content, but in this case, it's evergreen content, because by and large, we're talking about things that are still going to be around in two, three, four years time, because we haven't mentioned Clubhouse yet. I don't know if that's going to be around in two <laughs> weeks, <that long. laughs> but you know, most of the content blogging for Torben is, is pretty evergreen. So somebody might find that blog post two years from now. That might be their entry into Torpreneur. They might be searching for, hey, I need help writing a blog for my tour business. Find the blog post, read it on Torpreneur and go, hang on, I didn't know about this podcast. Next thing, they become a raving fan. They consume all the content. They become an epic guest on the show. So it's a lot of work to repurpose, right? But there's a lot of wins that come with them. It is some work, but... The one way to start it is when you're working on that blog, or again, that video or audio, whatever it is that you're doing, it could be, again, a picture gallery even, think about how you can break this up while you're doing it, like how you could actually put it into different parts. And the different parts could be for future content, but then how do you actually distribute it on social media too? So it's best to do it while you're working on it is like, okay, how could this kind of be separated into different pieces? Yeah. 
So are you suggesting then when we sit down to create a blog post that we should be thinking, okay, I'm creating a blog post today, but from this, I'm going to create a video or an infographic or whatever. I mean, is that what you're suggesting? I, I know that seems lofty. Oh, it's like one more thing I need to think about while I'm doing this, but you know, you start writing something and all of a sudden you realize this could actually be two or three different blogs. Or this little section is an awesome quote. Have that in mind while you're doing it. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to spend a lot of time working on that blog. And then, then you put it out there because it takes time. And then you think, oh, how could I have distributed this and repurposed it? Have it in the back of your mind. Absolutely. I guess another tip is to look at your analytics and see which blog posts have had the most engagement. And it could be something you've created six months ago, but then go, okay. That obviously resonate with the audience. How can I repurpose that? Because clearly it struck a note with people. Definitely. Yeah. So you can do it after the fact too, of course. I've never actually sat down and created content and thought, okay, how much? It's, it's always been an afterthought for me, to be honest. I'm with you because we spend a lot of time getting a blog out there. It takes time. You want to make it look good. You want to make it sound right. And it's just one more thing, again, that you got to think about. But yeah. Just have it in the back of your head while you're working on it. So let's say a uh, tour operator, they sat down, they've created a really good blog post, like three things to pack if you're visiting our destination, let's say it's something like that. What formats, you know, can they repurpose that into other than a blog post? So there, there could be a lot of things. Like you can move it into a video clip of the top five things, a video clip. You can create an image of the top five things, or you can release like the number one thing to do in this city is this. And then you can have that as social media posts and then link it back to a blog. There's a lot of ways. Here's one particular example I wanted to share with you. So this tourpreneur, Black Heb Heritage Tours. So Rob and team in London. Yes. They, they run tours. They run tours in black cabs. They had a video on their blog, which was one of their driver guides discussing the iconic London stadiums mm. in on London. So there was four, they featured four stadiums in there. And as I was looking at it, I thought, okay, this is a decent video. Like it's a meaty video. It's, it's relatively long and it's really a present, a tour presentation, but there are a lot of things that they could do with that, with that video to repurpose it. One would be shorter video clips yeah. of the intro of each stadium. And then they could use that on social media. And you can link back and say, hey, if you, know, if you want to listen to the full series, go here. Of course, they could use the smaller video clips on YouTube. You can have one that's about the iconic stadiums, and then you can have videos for each individual one. They could also, of course, re-edit those clips to work on Instagram, to work on Instagram stories. And then what about like virtual, like do a virtual map with a blog on your website? Or, you know, take, make a map image of those four stadiums. And that could be a, an image, a piece of creative on social media, which it could have then, you know, connect back and, or link back to, to the video. This could go in a lot of ways. It could go with image. Um, you could use maps. You could take quotes of famous musicians that played at those stadiums and make it a quote image. And then it links back to the video again. Honestly, the opportunities are endless for this one. And what was Rob's response when you suggested that to him? I actually didn't. I didn't ask him. I just looked at the blog post and thought, hmm, if we're talking about repurposing, this could be a number of different ways you can do it. So we'll have to ask Rob what he thinks of this idea. Absolutely. So right <laughs> now he has it as a video or a blog post? It's a video, but yeah. it's in a blog post format. How do you mean? So it's on his blog yeah. and he has, he has embedded a video. Got you. But he could actually write it as a whole blog post. Yeah, we'll add that link to the show notes, which everyone can find at tourpreneur.com forward slash 150. And you, and you can see how that's positioned. I particularly like that idea of, let's say he is discussing four stadia and splitting those up into four mini videos, because as we know, time is precious online. If someone sees a video and it's five minutes long, they might think, well, I haven't got five minutes to watch that. If they see a video that's 58 seconds long, they think, well, I've got a minute. But then by the end of that 58 seconds, they're like, oh, well, that was really fun. And hopefully at the end of that video, there's a message, hey, you know, click here for our video of Wembley Stadium. 
or whatever, some fun fact, then you want to click on it and keep consuming. So you've gone from that. I'm not going to, you know, it's like the Joe Rogan podcast. Every time I, well, I used to see that come up before he went to Spotify, three hours plus. And even though he could be interviewing somebody like Elon Musk, who is a fascinating guy and probably be a great interview. I'm like, I'm not sat in an aircraft anymore. I don't have three hours to listen to that. However, when I see the shorter clips, or he used to do that on YouTube, and it would just be a five or 10 minute segment, what Elon Musk has for breakfast that powers his day, you watch it. And then suddenly you're like, oh, this is a really cool interview. I will invest the three hours or not. Or it could be like, well, that was clickbait. I'm not going to that interview, right? I mean, it works both ways. Exactly. And I always thought for the longest time too, that videos had to be always be short. Yeah. Because they're, you know, we we consume a lot of information all day, but YouTube, long videos do very well. Yes. But on Facebook, shorter videos do well. So there's different considerations for different mediums as well. So yeah, breaking it up into shorter videos, absolutely. That would be a great way to repurpose. I'm guessing you could also do that with long blog posts as well, right? So if you have 10 things to pack to visit Burlington, Vermont in November or whatever, you could actually split that up. Yeah, absolutely. That would be probably one of the easiest things to do because you, or you, maybe you had it for women and men. So you do a, you know, a women's version or a men's version of what to pack. Yeah. So what we're basically saying here, the importance of the repurposing is that we all live in different areas of our digital world. There are some people who are constantly on Instagram, love that medium. That's where they consume their content. I'm a podcast geek. I'm always on podcasts. So by repurposing the content, you, rather than creating 10 different pieces of content, you can create one stellar piece of content and then repurpose it and send it out to those 10 different channels. We know that we're fighting with algorithms as well. So just because you send out that blog post that one time on Facebook certainly does not mean that majority of the people saw it. But even when you, you change it up a bit and you, you have a different image on it, which is maybe a quote or something from that blog post or an image, it may grab someone's attention differently than it did before. Maybe they didn't see it at all before. Maybe they're seeing it now. Or maybe for some reason the, the <laughs> algorithm gods opened it up and brought it to more people because it had a picture attached to it as opposed to it just a link. This is why repurposing is, is important because it's going to expand the number of people that, that see your content. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And I think what's key is making sure that it's quality content because you don't just want to repurpose it. So someone sees it say on Facebook or Twitter, you want that person to then share it again with their audience and they're yes. only going to share it or promote it in any way. If they're like, this is really good content. I want to share this with my friends who want to plan a bachelorette party in New Orleans, for instance. So here's a tip on that. It seems completely absurd that we have to ask people to share things. Yeah. But we do. Yeah. But we do because we're as humans, we, we like to be told what to do next. And that's why call to actions can work well. So asking people to share it. You can even, you know, if you have a blog post and you've got an audience that has, has that have looked at your content before, tag the person, tag the person to look at it. The, you know, you have some people that really love to see a, that were interested in a walking tour of Spain before, and then you did another post about a related topic, tag them in the, um, in the post. Because sharing helps. Sharing is what's going to broaden your audience. When you have a Facebook group that's just 100 people, it, it's going to be very, very hard you can't just post content expecting to grow your audience. It doesn't happen that way. Yes. Plus also, you, you quite rightly mentioned algorithms, but then also there's group permissions and settings. I know you and I both run a Facebook group, but you often see a post in there that people can't read because someone's tried to share a post that is only for that particular group. Or if someone tries to share a post from your own group, it won't work because you kept it as a private group setting. So that's something to bear in mind as well. One more, one more thing to deal with. Yes. Well, that's true. So this all sounds perfect. It sounds wonderful. It sounds simple beyond belief. But let's be honest, repurposing content is time consuming. And whilst most of us have had way more time than we ever wanted during the pandemic, when we're all back out there leading tours again, repurposing takes time. Got a quick message from one of our sponsors, and then we'll get right back to today's show. Stay tuned. Your search for the industry's best online reservation system is over. 
Fair Harbor enables thousands of tour and activity businesses across the globe with streamlined experiences that convert website visitors into paying customers to strategically increase online bookings and overall revenue. Their highly customizable cloud-based booking solutions are designed to be easy for you and your customers. Fair Harbor eases every aspect of your day-to-day -day operations through one easy-to-use dashboard. Options like custom seat maps and online seat selection can all be tailored to your unique needs, while capacity limits and contactless mobile ticket scanning help you maintain the latest safety protocols. All of this alongside Fair Harbor's best-in-class 24-7 support. Visit fairharbor.com to see why over 15,000 tour, activity, and attraction businesses choose Fair Harbor. What tips, tricks, or tools do you recommend to our listeners that will make them more efficient when it comes to repurposing content? So first of all, just look at your top blog posts. If you have a little bit of time, look at your top blog posts that are driving traffic to your website. And then think about a way like using something like Canva, which is relatively free for majority of the functions that it has. Canva is a great way to, to make up a kind of a quick image of some kind. You can take a picture that you had of a particular tour and you can put some copy on there. And that could literally be another piece of content that you could probably, you know, if you can work around Canva, which is very user-friendly, you could create an image pretty quickly. You could create a quote or a, a customer review that someone said about that particular tour. And again, that's repurposing content as well. So don't overthink it. You know, you're not going to be able to do this for every single post, but work on the ones that are driving traffic or that you want them to, to drive more traffic to your business. Focus there. It's a good start. I would also say as a quick tip for our listeners is if you are pushed for time or if like me, your design skills are shocking, go to fiverr.com and there are plenty of designers on there. They don't all cost the earth. Yes, you need to do some due diligence. But, you know, if you just want a really nice quote and a template or something like that made, or even just to get a template made for, I mean, I, you know, have that on Torpreneur, I have a template and I can just drop the text in with a quick image. It saves me so much time. That's exactly what I did. Right. I, I did the same thing. Create a template, change the colors depending on what it is. But I share like a tourism marketing tip every week on, on my Facebook group. It's a template because you know what? It works. And then I just use it again until I you know, have something else that I want to share. But a template is a great way. That's a great example. And what about video? Are there any tools? Is this an area you're familiar with in terms of how you edit videos or create videos? Do you have any tips or tricks in that direction? I personally don't create videos. I, I'm married to a guy that does that. Yeah, I find that editing, you got to have a, it, it's a skill set. Yes. It's something you've got to learn and it takes time. What do you use to do video editing? So very little. I use iMovie comes with my Mac, but I do very little. And in fact, you raise a good point because I sat down before we got together today and I thought, okay, in an ideal world, how would I repurpose my content? Now, okay, I'm not a tour operator. I'm, I'm a travel media business. And when I thought it through, here's what I should do. You and I are talking right now. So in an ideal world, I should have recorded a quick message um, on my iPhone before we got on to put it out as an Instagram reel or a TikTok and say something like, hey, I'm just about to jump on a chat with Doreen. We're going to talk about repurposing content. So there's that. Um, then we would do our interview. Obviously, as usual, the audio is edited on, to go out on the podcast. I very rarely do videos as part of Torpreneur. That's something I probably should be doing. So we could be recording this right now for those out there that want to watch. I know we did that for the copywriting clinic and that was great because people could follow along. So I should be doing video. I do pay to have show notes created mainly for SEO purposes. I don't know how many, and maybe our listeners can tell us how many of you actually go to the show notes. I, I think for Torpreneur, maybe if we mentioned some really cool app, people would go to the show notes to find that app. But in general, I do wonder with, like I ask myself, I listen to hundreds of podcasts. How many times do I go to the show notes? Very rare. But I do need that intro in my app for me to say, oh yeah, this is an episode I'm interested in. So the show notes I'm having on selected episodes 
somebody write up a blog post or an article based on that because obviously there is a dollar amount uh, there's a cost to that video should be going out on youtube on instagram tv instagram stories all of that facebook i should be splicing that video into short segments so for instance on my traditional regular interviews where i go through the tour operator's story Maybe I have the five to 10 minutes where they talk about why they picked a certain booking platform that goes out as a standalone content. Yeah. And then probably what I should do is with the blog post I get written is maybe not to put it on torpreneur.com, but to put it on Medium or LinkedIn or on other areas of the web rather than my own site. So already that sounds to me like a, either A, a full-time job or B, it's going to cost a fair bit to get all of that produced. And if I wanted to outsource all of that, for instance. And you can't do it all. Exactly. I can't. With video, you know, for some other podcasts I do is basically, again, I went to Fiverr, build me an intro video. They've gone and done that. I drop the video in. I Maybe I will uh, crop it, you know, if there's talking at the end, you know, off air, et cetera, or whatnot. But I don't go in and really edit it as we do with the podcast, you know, on this podcast. They would be three hours long with all my ums and ahs, you knows, and all my crutch words. But my my good editor, Carrie, she takes most of those out. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. And so maybe a good approach to this is look at, you know, what are the mediums that you're in Yeah. and decide what am I good at? So what can I do? And I can do relatively quickly. And then what could I hire someone to do, but in a reasonable manner and focus on the top pieces that you really want to get out there yes. because they're, they're driving traffic to your to your website, or there are major messages that you really want to bring across about your brand. But yeah, we can't do everything. Let's try a little bit of resharing. So yes. you're right. It's not about just posting on your social media streams or reposting a blog post and sharing it, but there's other sources. Now, internally, of course, email, your email marketing, email newsletter, that's a good place to do it. But there are external sources like Medium, there's Growth Hackers, there's Reddit, There's Facebook groups, of course, and LinkedIn groups, but it is so frustrating to get those spammy ones on Facebook groups when you know this Facebook group isn't even about this topic, but someone's spamming you for a blog post that they wrote. It's the most, probably the most annoying thing. (laughs) Those other mediums like Flipboard is another medium that you can share blog posts. It just, it seems to be never ending other sharing apps that are out there. But pick some to try them and see if you actually get some views out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I like your idea as well of looking at the blog posts that have got the most or tracked the most engagement and say, okay, how can I riff off that and maybe write um, a blog post for your local tourist board, for instance, or a local travel site that might get a lot more traffic? Because you don't want to have duplicate content, right? That's key. Yeah. So the, the biggest challenge with duplicate content is when you have content that's on your blog and it, and then someone else has the exact same content. You could rewrite it up. Like, say you got some publicity. Say someone wrote an article about your tour. You could turn around and just write it differently, different heading, different words, maybe a different angle to it, and then post it. That would be a nice way to, to reshare content that's about your business. Absolutely. Another question that springs to mind before we wrap up here is I see a lot of tools about scheduling these posts like Hootsuite and Buffer. What's your take on all of those? They're really helpful. Really? They really are for a number of reasons. One is they work on a calendar format. So it forces you to reshare your content and you can, instead of individually putting social media on there. So, you know, you're going to individually post something on, on Instagram then you do it on Facebook, then you're doing it on Pinterest or whatever. You can organize it all at once. You can invite other people that are doing work for you to go on there and post it or to write it or to you know add an image. They're extremely helpful for all those things, but especially for resharing. That's going to allow you to repurpose your content. Um, and even just reshare a blog that you've posted two months ago, don't assume that, again, the, that a lot of people have seen it. So I, I'm a really big believer in them. They make a big difference. Yeah, and I ask that because it's all very well going out and creating on this content. Then you've got to share it yourself and talk about a full-time job. Anyone who's doing this <laughs> knows that just you know putting all your content on all your social media channels is almost a full-time job. So having something that 
makes it a little easier. And I was asking, because I always wondered if Facebook wouldn't really like you using these tools or whichever social media channel, because maybe they think this is someone just, it's not authentic. Uh, I've always worried about if they actually do show it. Very often there's things that change with the rules about what these social media management tools can do. So it, it's changing constantly. That's why social media managers have a job, right? Mm. Like they, it really is a full-time job. It is. it is. And, you know, you bring up sharing. It's tough for me to get people to share a podcast episode because most of us are listening on our app. How do you share that? I'm sure there's a way. I don't even know if I've ever done it using my app. So I need that blog post. I need really good show notes or I need a really good headline and an image so people go oh i, I want to share this with people this is an amazing story or an amazing interview well most of your shares are coming from social media aren't they yes yeah they are yeah they're not coming from the native platform correct i mean i wish there was an easier way of doing that but it's not but i have to work with that restriction yeah so there are a bunch of challenges as it relates to repurposing but yet starting somewhere yeah. is is the right start Marvelous. Thank you. I know we, we've covered that at lightning speed, but I just wanted to give that an introduction and really talking about the importance of repurposing content. If you are listening today and you've got a really epic tool or app or tip that you're using to help you repurpose your content, please let us know either on our Facebook group, which I hope you're all members of, or drop me a line at shane at tourpreneur.com. And I might even write a blog post on it or Doreen might, and we'll share it and, and get it out there in the world. So uh, do let us know about your tips. What have we got coming up next on our essential blogging guide for tour operators? Well, funny enough, we're finally getting to, to writing copy on a blog. Fantastic. <laughs> we're going to talk about copy tips for writing a blog. Marvelous. I look forward to that. And again, for those listening today, if you've got any questions on this, drop us a line, ask in the Facebook group. Doreen is a member of the group as well, and we're very happy to tackle your questions on future episodes. Show notes today, torpreneur.com forward slash 150, or I've created a special page, blogging for tourapparatus.com. You can find all of our episodes related to this series there. Doreen, thank you so much for coming on today and sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.